what are some good ways that we can start onboarding people onto these markets other than other than like the market mechanisms that you guys are building? Yeah, so I think there's on the one hand there's obviously core infrastructure missing, like efficient market mechanisms, just something that allows to have lots of people. Um, but then there's also other issues that we still have to solve. For example, um, if users today want to use a D-app, they have to download MetaMask, they have to understand what the private key is, um, they have to understand what the implications are if they lose their private key. Uh, so I think currently the environment is still only for early adopters. But if you want to reach the, um, a mass of people, then you have to make the onboarding much easier. And we believe uh, removing the requirement to understand what the private key is and this backup mechanism is essential to do so. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are also building a solution for this part. We are building a smart contract based wallet where you have higher security than today with other wallets because you have two factor authentication. And it also allows you to restore access to your wallet under the assumption that you're losing your phone, your notebook, and so on. Oh, sweet. So you, are, you don't have to do a backup of your, your private key anymore. Instead, we use different uh, technologies or different, um, different procedures to make sure that you can get access to your device again, to your funds again. Even if you lose your phone, you can, for example, use uh, something called um, another uh, paralysis proof. You have to prove that you lost access by, um, by uh, depositing a bond. And this bond can be slashed by someone who still has access to this, uh, to this wallet. If no one has access, uh, then the one who placed the bond can get access to this wallet again. Okay, this is really interesting. Because you guys also have you guys are really famous for making uh, multi-sig possible on Ethereum. Yeah. How does that, these things all tie together for, in terms of wallets? Yeah, so basically we had to create our own multi-sig wallet because at that time there was none that allowed to securely store tokens, ERC20 tokens. And the multi-sig basically is kind of a proxy contract to interact on the Ethereum network. It allows to send any kind of transaction but then sending it from the multisig and not directly from a private key. And we initially built this for teams. So a team uh, can maintain the funding that they raised via the ICO and so on. But there's also a very important use case for personal use. So if you want to secure funding, it would also make sense for you to use a multisig. And actually some people did this. They used our team multisig with multiple ledger wallets to secure their personal funds. But this is, of course, a bit tricky. It, the, you, the user experience is very bad because you have to have multiple ledgers. You have to swap a lot of, uh, of wallets to actually do any transaction. It's really not easy to use. And that's why we decided to, uh, dedi to dedicate resources to build such a multi-sig wallet for personal use, where you have one key on your phone and another key on your, on your notebook. So you don't have to buy an additional device and you still have two keys on two different devices. Mm -hmm. um, and now because you're using this smart contract to interact with Ethereum, we can build into the smart contract procedures that allow to replace your notebook or your phone as one of the key holders. Mm -hmm. um, and this can be such a recovery mechanism. And a recovery mechanism that says under certain conditions you are allowed to swap your notebook or your phone or both. Um, that's why this is kind of laying the foundation for this and we call this Gnosis Safe. It's already available for Android, for testnet. So if you have an Android device, uh, you can go to safe.gnosis.io and there you can download the app and the Chrome extension that are required to do this two-factor authentication. I've used my fair share of like Bitcoin multi-sig to secure our funds, but yeah. the user experience has always been horrible. <laughs> It's never gotten it, better. Yeah, exactly. The user experience so far is not really awesome. And the Nose is safe makes uh, the goal is to make it as easy as possible to use multisig for everyone. People should not be even aware of what the multisig is. So that's why we call it Nose is safe and not Nose is multisig. Yeah. Because actually most people don't know what the multisig is anyways. Yeah. Uh, but two-factor authentication is something that most people know from banking and so on. And there's an obvious advantage in security. Do you hear the story about Coinbase? 
um, helping uh, store funds of different ICOs. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, okay, why are we doing this all over again? <laughs> we experienced exactly. something like this before. Um, it's the same thing as a bank. What happens if there's a bank run of, of sorts? And isn't it just better to have an on-chain way of uh, different companies being able to store it? Uh, it's also much more transparent. Like for us, and there have been other teams actually building on top of the Gnosis Multisig to make it more transparent. So for example, Aragon, they built their own interface to let the community know what they're doing with their funds. And it's just also nice to be transparent what you as a company are using the money for. Uh, and that's why uh, we would never consider moving our funds, like crypto funds, to a centralized system.